All right, I am here with my cat tree in the background. <laughs> um, anyway, hi guys, I am back. Um, I know I've been really bad at YouTube recently, but I wanted to film a video going over my fall decor, how I decorated for fall. I went a little bit over the top compared to what I normally do, which is still nowhere near what other people do for fall decorating, so don't worry. Um, but I'm gonna take you guys around my house um, see what I did for fall and then we're gonna be doing a fall white sangria like an apple apple cider sangria um, So just stay tuned for that at the end of the video, but let's just get into the fall decor Okay, first things first is the centerpiece. I guess you can call it that um, Of my ottoman here. I just have this tray table that I got a while back from TJ Maxx and then um, this sensational fireside candle that I talked about in my favorites video. So pretty simple, but I do like this candle for display. It looks very, very pretty. And you can see Cora in the background. There's Coco. They're getting so big. Can't believe it. <laughs> I'm moving right along just kind of at my front door. I have this pumpkin sitting here and this was from at home. I've seen something like this from at home like every year. This is from a couple years ago. So it's just a wooden little pumpkin-y guy. Thing new that I got this year from Joann's I'm really excited about is this ceramic pumpkin that looks like it's like a cable knit. I don't know if you can see that, but it's really pretty, lots of very nice detail. And I'm pretty sure this was the smaller size that they had. I think they had a bigger one, but I just have it kind of on my media stand here with all of my fall candle collection. But moving right along, I actually do have a new um, candle pick here. So this is actually from At Home. It's called Autumn Evening and it smells very, very good. The bottom says Autumn Woodland on it. So it's like a woodsy kind of scent. Love that. All right, next thing you see my shadow, amazing. But this apple here is from um, Joann's. And I do really, really enjoy it. I just honestly don't have a good place for it in my home. If you have like a nice entryway table that would look really good there. But I just kind of have it on my shelf, which has a ton of stuff on it, including cat toys, <laughs> um, which doesn't look very uh, put together here. So I really didn't think about where this was actually gonna go in my home before buying it. Hey you guys, coming at you um, from the future here. I'm wearing this disgusting hoodie and my nails look hideous. But I wanted to share just two more things that I picked up for fall. Um, I picked up this beautiful pillow. It's a cable knit kind of camel color and it's pretty much exactly what I've been kind of looking for or, or dreaming of. Not really looking for because I don't go shopping that much, but I did, I think I kind of like manifested this in the store and I think it was about 20 bucks. There is a tag on it. It says, what does it say? Magashoni Home. I don't know. Maybe you can find that. Um, but I also picked up the sister to my fireside that I always talk about. This is Falling Leaves by Sensational. It's the same large size that I have in Fireside. And you know I keep the price tag on it. It was $12.99. What a good deal. But I really, really like it. Um, it goes kind of with my taste of like simple, um, I'd call it like an atmospheric scent <laughs> instead of um, something too sweet or cakey or anything like that. But I really like this candle. I burnt it once, maybe twice since I got it. I've really been loving that. So I wanted to make sure I talked about these other picks for my fall decor. We have this back door here moving on to kind of the kitchen area. And I knew I wanted to hang a wreath kind of inside of the window and I definitely accomplished that. You can't really tell it's like too um, bright outside and dark in my home right now <laughs> to really see what's going on but it's just this cute little fall wreath that I got from at home. I'll try to link everything I can here but I really think it adds something cute to this door here um, that was otherwise kind of plain. But the thing that I'm really excited about is the dining room. <laughs> I needed to redo my dining room table. Um, so the first thing I'll show you actually are these placemats. I got this set of six from Hobby Lobby um, for a really good price. I was looking for this kind of like natural 
woven style for a while and I finally found some good ones. I'm gonna sit down for this because holding this freaking camera is so heavy. But what I'm really excited about is this centerpiece. So everything outside of just this center candle and the hurricane, I think it's called, uh, candle holder, everything else is from Joann's this year. So it's all new. The old candle, old candle holder in the center is from at home from a couple of years ago, but everything else is new this year from Joann's. I'm really, really happy with how it came out, if you can see that clearly. All of the foliage is from Joann's, and I just kind of cut everything up. So if you can see, there's just some eucalyptus, some more eucalyptus, <laughs> lots of eucalyptus, um, some little berries in there. You'll see a couple of these like little cotton balls, but then some pumpkins, and also these really cute wooden pumpkins. Oh, I did take the tag off. Wow, good job, Valerie. Thought I left the tags on, but um, these are so cute. And I think they had, where were these? There were definitely bigger ones of these. I wanna say this was like the mini, I feel like there was like a medium size and then like a large size, but these are super, super cute to go in there. And I just feel like it's such a cute um, centerpiece that can be transitioned from season to season. So I can put like spring stuff in there, winter stuff definitely and the bowl that everything is in is also from joann's i feel like it was i feel like it was pretty cheap i want to say it was like 19.99 you know how everything's like 50 percent off in those stores but don't quote me on that <laughs> i'll find out exactly how much it is but as soon as i saw the bowl i was like yes this is what i need to do with my centerpiece and it really came out pretty well i was gonna film um making this <laughs> But it actually was kind of a pain in my butt because I don't have anything good to cut fake flowers with because there is typically a wire in them. So I was kind of struggling <laughs> to get the flowers cut off. And then, you know, you end up like fiddling with it for like two hours to get it right. Um, but all in all, I'm really happy with how it turned out and I'm so excited to um, switch it out every season. Okay, so now let's make the fall sangria. Um, you're gonna need a bottle of white wine. I'm using a sweeter wine that I have on hand, um, Moscato. I think this is from my Bright Cellars box. Pretty sure. I also have a hard cider. I'm following a recipe loosely. I'll link it below, but I'm just kind of winging it at this point. I do also have some plain apple cider, and then I have one orange, one green apple, one red apple. We'll see how much of these I end up putting in because my pitcher is quite tiny. And then I have a pear. So I'm gonna get to chopping these and then I will show you assembling everything. All right, I just chopped my fruit. I just did the most fast and loose chop job of my life. I'm gonna leave um, Granny Smith out of this. I'm gonna leave Granny, Granny out of the out of the game tonight, and just go with the red pear, the red delicious apple, and the oranges. I did in wedges. Everything else is just a childlike chop. But I'm gonna open up my bottle of wine with my handy dandy wine opener. I really wanna see how much wine is gonna fit in this pitcher because I may need to go half of a bottle on this, to be honest. Let's start seeing where we're at <laughs> in terms of size here. I could be wrong, but I could just, my eyes could be playing tricks on me. 
skincare. Oh my god! Wow, that was a huge optical illusion. So I did fit the entire bottle. Clearly. I'm gonna grab. Does this have a bottle cap? One second. I'm gonna crack open this hard cider. Pop him in there. And that hard cider is pretty tart, so I think that'll give a good balance. I mean, this is gonna be a pretty sweet drink, not gonna lie, but whatever. Um, I'm gonna put about a cup of this regular cider in here. I think, I think that's what I just did. Um, and I'm gonna put the fruit in. The pear I'm going to hold out and put in my glass just because I don't want the pear to be mushy in my pitcher, but I will put this in and I'm going to, um, when I pour it into the glass, I'm going to leave some room and top it with some tonic water that was in the recipe to make it sparkly. The question is, how in heaven's name am I going to mix this? I just killed one of my cat's toys, so I'm going to take the back of the spoon and get her nice and macerated. I sure do hope this tastes good because that would be an awful waste of alcohol and juices and fruits, whatever. I'll use granny for something. I made um, an apple bundt cake the other weekend and I just made some apple um, danishes, apple cheese, um, cream cheese danishes. I'm trying to bake every weekend, just so you know. All right, we're mixed. Um, I'm going to serve this right now because I'm not patient. I've got my little baby tonic. I've got my wine glass. Let's make it official. I've been drinking margaritas for so long I don't even know what this is. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to... I'll pop a couple pears in here. Um, I think the recipe that I am following, in quotes, calls for pear liqueur or other recipes called for pear liqueur. Um, that'd be a great addition to actually make the pear have a real presence in the drink. But you know, whoop, well, I guess we wanted that. I'm gonna fill it like to there. I'm gonna put some more, pop this random orange in. Some more orange in here. OMG. Why did no one tell me this was going to be so hard? Let's get some apples. Alright, that's decent enough. My orange looks a little bit Tattered. Whatever, this is not the Food Network. Okay. Um, and then I'm gonna. Where did my little tonic guy go? Oh, here he is. He was hiding from me. So I'm gonna top this. Whoop! Jesus. Top her off. Yes. I don't know. I think that's a good idea. And then I'm just gonna like poke it. <laughs> AKA stir, if you will. Just so it's not like all tonic on the top. I don't even know what tonic water is, per se. Let's give her a taste. 
All right, let's give it a try. Presentation is lovely. Great for a party. Not that we're allowed to have those, but whatever. Ooh, that's lovely. I really like this. Mmm. Yummy. The bubbles are key. I really like the bubbliness. Mmm. Good job, Valerie. So yeah, I kind of followed a recipe, kind of didn't, um, but I'll list exactly what I did below and the recipe um, that was my inspiration. So, cheers. Cheers to fall. Yum, cheers to me. You really can't taste any alcohol in this. It tastes like straight up juice, so um, leave it out of reach of children. Um, but it does have the hard seltzer and the hard wine, so.